Welcome to Living Word, a place where you can witness the power of God, a place of love, a place of joy, a place where the Word of God can be heard here at Living Word. We welcome you. God does not change things based on speaking, but God changed things based on praying. You won't be afraid of, of, of what uh, comes, will, or may your way because you know you have faith in God. God is able to do whatever I ask him to do. Welcome to Living Word Christian Fellowship, where we teach with the spirit of excellence. We have so much in store for you today. From our health awareness to our Sunday school review, and a powerful word from my pastor, Dr. Timothy R. Thomas. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning, Living Word. Today's health topic is social health. And social health can be defined as the relationships and interactions that we have with each other. And these relationships can be romantic, it can be friendly, it can be family relationships, or it can be professional. And have the importance of having a social health um, one, it can allow the development of assertive skills. And social psychologists define assertive skills as being self-assured and being confident without causing conflict. Next, it can do, it can increase your self-esteem. And your self-esteem is just having confidence in oneself and it can be having self-respect. Uh, next, it can do, it can encourage communication and it can set boundaries um, within oneself. Um, the fourth thing it can do, it can um, cause positive and increases your emotional resilience. As I talked in the past, your emotional resilience is the ability to adapt to um, stressful situations. And lastly, um, the importance of having social health is to have fun. So studies have shown that um, social health is linked to your mental and physical health. Um, when you have a poor social health, it can cause you to have a weakened immune system. It can cause heart attacks, high blood pressure, cancer, and poor mental health, um, such as depression, anxiety, and some schizophrenic related systems, such as hallucinations. So, to um, signs to have um, that you have a good social health is that one, there's no self-deception. Um, if you're in a relationship, uh, no matter what kind, if you're not true to yourself or can be honest with others uh, about yourself, then it's not a healthy relationship. Next um, is that um, there's trust and conflict management. If there's more ordering than um, communi positive communication, then it's time to check out their relationship. And um, lastly, is has to be a balance. Um, this relationship cannot take all your time and all your resources. I've been taught that um, relationships has to have a balance, that everything has to net to zero. Um, in relationships, my dad always say there's a give and take. And if... Um, people give more than they're taking, um, then there's it's not a healthy relationship. It could be toxic and vice versa. So over time, a balanced relationship has to have a net of zero. And if these relationships are in um, positive, as the things that I said that were, um, it's time to kind of check out your type of relationship that you have. Um, it's up to the pray about. And if God, you know, give you the signs to let go, then let go. <laughs> and uh, just keep that in mind. And that's the health awareness for today. Timothy R. Thomas of the Living Word Christian Fellowship Ministry. In the heat of the night, I 
got trouble from wall to wall. That's all I really know. <laughs> yes, I have a favorite TV show. My favorite TV show is In the Heat of the Night. I love Sparta, Mississippi, Bubba, Skinner. I love uh, Bill Gillespie. Uh, I love Parker. I love Sweet. Do I am. I love all. I love the, the plot. I love the theme of this show. I love how simple the show is. And yet, it's profound. I recognize Mr. O'Connor as Archie Bunker, who used to be a big in me, a big, uh, uh, a um, racial, racial epitome on the All in the Family show. And now, is flipped that he is in love with a black woman, showing a extreme level of uh, transformation. And and lastly, I like the fact that the show opened uh, originally. Uh, I started watching the show. Uh, right when I first became a police officer. And I thought everything that I've done in my life from the military, undercover narcotics, to, to whatever I've done, I wanted to look and see how it is done before I did it. And when, when I first got hired with the Calipari Sheriff's Office, I started watching it here at night, exiting out of the military to go to LSU under the Green and Gold Scholarship Program as for the future young officer. So when, when I started watching this show, just by random selection, I instantaneously fell in love with it. And I've been watching it since 1984, every night. I watch episode after episode. So that's my favorite show. Today's lesson will be coming out of the Union Gospel Press Sunday School book, and the lesson is entitled, The Word Became Flesh. It will be coming out of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14, and the golden text reads, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Often we hear the phrase, let there be light, and we think of Genesis 1. John 1, however, provides an greater example of light. This Christmas season, we think of the greatest light of all, that of our Lord Jesus, God's Son, the light of the world. So the lesson is broken up into three parts. God's Son is revealed, that's the first part. In the opening verses, the Apostle revealed God's Son. The Apostle clearly believed in the Trinity, saw no difficulty in asserting that God the Father and Jesus are Number two, we have God's Son is rejected. How will people respond to this light and ultimately the Word? Sadly, many would reject Him. The light is shining in the darkness of this sinful world, but people fail to respond to it properly. They reject the light because they do not comprehend it. John the Baptist came to witness, came to bear witness to the light, who is here identified as Jesus Christ Himself. And his, his goal was that all might come to faith in Jesus, God's Son. And number three, finally, have God's Son is received. Although the Word said that some people did not comprehend and rejected him, John the Baptist said that unbelief is not universal. In the life of each person who does receive God's light to the world, it is the wonder of becoming a child of God that they receive. 
The person who receives him by faith is given the power to become God's spiritual child. And that concludes the lesson for this week. Today's message is entitled, How to Pray During Times Like These. Coming uh, at the latter portion of James, the fifth chapter, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, when we come and we talk about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, we need to understand uh, what are the words effectual, fervent uh, means? Effectual is uh, defined as producing or able to produce effects. Fervent, on the other hand, is having a great showing, a great warmth, or an intensity in spirit. In other words, you are preparing yourself to pray. Praying is is not a, a lecture. Praying is a communication. Praying is not acknowledging the fact that someone is present. Praying is communicating. When you communicate, you communicate uh, by hearing and then also by speaking. So while one is speaking, the other is listening. And then while the other is uh, listening, they are listening at the one who is speaking. This morning, as we look at what prayer is all about in times like these, we have to look and really understand that as we communicate with God, we again, we're not just acknowledging him, but as we communicate with him, we are asking God uh, for an answer. Now, when you are asking God for something, you have to wait on the response. You just can't passively say, um, hello, how you doing? Or good morning, God. God wants to commune with you, which means he wants to spend time in a dialogue with you. I like James when James says that, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When a, a effective and fervent prayer is going forth, that means that person is really intensifying their time with the Lord. It's a personal time. It's not a time that you just take yourself and say, uh, while I'm walking to the kitchen or I'm getting some water, I'm going to pray while I brush my teeth or comb my hair. I'm just going to pray. You're going to get a, dedica a dedicated time that you're going to allow God to be God and allow him to be able to impregnate your time with expectation of knowing what he's going to answer when you pray. But if you fail to pray, then therefore there can be no communication. So the truth of the matter is, a lot of people are not having prayers answered because simply they are not praying. Speaking is not praying. Praying is not speaking. When you pray, there is a dialogue. So allow God the time to speak back to you. <clears throat> I like Mark the 11th chapter, verse 24. In Mark the 11th chapter, verse 24, it gives us a definitive answer in when we praying to God. And I like how uh, he, he opens up with, with the uh, lesson of the fig tree. If we go back to verse 20 in Mark 11 chapter, he said, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called into remembrance. He he remembered what was said about uh, the fig tree, about the master. He said, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Jesus answered, Jesus answered. Key word, a dialogue, a communication here. Jesus is answering the statement or question that was asked to him. 
It said, he answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Now, in order for us to pray, we're going to have to believe that God is able to do far exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. We got to believe that he is able to give us what we need in days of this time that we are facing. When you're talking to God, you are not, you are not talking to him as if you are talking to one of your buddies, but you are talking to him as a savior, as a father, as a, as a Lord of your life. And when you are communicating with him, you are telling him how much you appreciate him. Now, before we get into uh, the, the latter part of the verse that have faith in God, you got to understand in your communication, there are various of types of, uh, of, of uh, factors as it relates to prayer. They are uh, uh, basic forms of prayer, must I say. There's a praise uh, prayer. There's a petition or supplication uh, prayer. And there's an intercession prayer when you are interceding for someone. And then finally, there's a prayer of thanksgiving. See, God want us to be able to have faith in him when we come to him with praise. We praying to him because of what he done already in our life. We praise him for, for who he is. And then the second form of supplication, we making our requests be made known unto the Lord. We thanking him in advance. We thanking him for what he's about to do. And then in a seating or in a session, we are praying and asking God to help someone else. It's not us at this time. It's someone else that's standing in a greater need or a greater blessing than we have. So the prayer of intercession is very vitally important to the church today. Most people in the church today are not uh, impacted by the, the virus itself, <clears throat> excuse me, by the virus itself, but they know someone is. So what the church does is come together and begin to intercede. The problem with us today in most uh, uh, homes and churches is that people are not praying. People are, people are speaking, but they're not praying. See, God does not change things based on speaking, but God changed things based on praying. When we make our petition made known, when we are interceding, when we are praising and thanking God, then that's showing God that we have what James, I mean, uh, what Mark says in the 11th chapter, that we have the faith in God. And then he says on in verse 21, and Peter called in to remember us again and said unto him, Master, behold that fig tree that thou curse it and wither it away. Jesus said to them, have faith in me, have faith in God. In verse 23, he said, for verily I say, whatsoever uh, ye shall say unto this mountain. See, church, the problem is we are scared to speak to the mountain. We're scared to speak to the elephant in the room. And God wants you to speak to that elephant in the room. We don't need to speak to people. We need to speak to the mountain that is before us. See, the reason why there's a mountain before you is because whatever is standing before you is larger than the God in front of you. And if you allow God to stand before whatever stands in front of you, then you won't see the obstacle itself, but you will see the God before you see the obstacle. And then the scripture where it says, for great is he that is within me than he that is in the world, then you won't be afraid of what's going on. You won't be afraid of the coronavirus. You won't be afraid of, of gathering together as God's people should be. You won't be afraid of, of, of what uh, comes, will, or may your way because you know you have faith in God. So when God says to us, you will be able to say to this mountain, watch this now, be thou removed and be cast 
into the sea. In other words, get out of my way. You are not a factor in my life. And let me share with you this day, this morning, that there's nothing that will come against us that is greater than the God on the inside of us. Church, it's time. It's time for us to stand. It's time for us to be believers. It's time for us to really trust God and know that when we pray to God, we are praying that God will move every mountain that may appear in our way. So he go on to say, if you can cast it into the sea and you shall not doubt it in your heart. Go great God. Doubt it in your heart, but you shall believe. That word believe is an optimal word. To believe something, you have to say to yourself that something is true. You feel sure about the truth of the matter. In other words, I'm truthful to the fact that I know no weapon formed against us. I know that if I have faith in God, that God is able to do whatever I ask him to do. Then he says, you shall believe that those things which thou said shall come to pass. See, I believe that when I speak to you and say the first Sunday in June, we'll be back to normal. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. So what I do, I stand on the promises of what God says. He said that uh, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe you receive them and ye shall have them. And when you, when you stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. In other words, if you can't forgive somebody else, don't expect God to forgive you. But when you're praying, you're asking God on the behalf of others, as well as yourself, to move on your behalf. Praying is an effective tool for all of us believers. And I stand with you this morning to say, continue to pray and believe God. God is able to do it if you can believe it. Church, I believe that God is able. He's able to move these mountains. Whatever this mountain may be, you can move the mountain. So I say to you, as James said to us, that the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See, to be in the right place with God, is to be in right standing with God. Your relationship is right. You're spending time. See, when you are not communing with the person that you say you love, there's no fellowship. You can't say you love God and you're not spending that time with God. I encourage you to become the righteous so your prayers are not hindered. And then lastly, in Mark 11 and 24 again, he says, uh, when you pray, believe it. Believe that God is able to do it. I'm closing with this phrase. Prayer is the key, but faith unlocks the door. That's not scripture, but it's true. See, if prayer is the asking of God and you waiting on God to answer, by faith you receive whatever you believe. So there's no limit on God. And I say to you this morning, how to pray in times like these. Here's the key. You ready for the key? Take the limit off of God. Again, take the limit off of God. Until then, be blessed. This is Dr. Timothy R. Thomas of the Living Word Christian Fellowship. At this time, we want to take the time out to offer Christ to you. And we want to ask you, as you believe that the Lord is able to do it, he's able to change your life. He's able to come into your heart. 
no matter what had happened, no matter what is going on, no matter what's around you, you are able to receive Jesus Christ today. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come in my life. Save me. Deliver me. And set me free. Give me a relationship, Lord, that only you and I can develop. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you have prayed this prayer with us, please drop us a line on the address on your screen. Let us know that you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you want to become covenant partners with this ministry, you can give to the givelify.com uh, tab to the Living Word Christian Fellowship, send your tithes, offerings, uh, your donations, whatever you want to send to the ministry. We ask that you will continue to help us stay on this station and help us continue with our broadcast at this time by becoming covenant partners with us. Remember, the church is supported on tithes and free will offering. Until then, be blessed in the Lord.